Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, today, you know, I'm going to be talking about uh, being empowered. You know, as I was looking at a, um, a, vi a little video of a friend of mine who's, who is a minister in South America. And uh, he just had written on, on, above, on, on his post that said empowered. And that just hit me so strong, empowered. How empowered we are. So I began to meditate it on all uh, this week on, on being empowered and, and thinking of, of all the, of what God has invested in us. The Bible says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, your physical eyes can deceive you. Because when you look into a mirror and you see yourself, sometimes you don't see who you are. You, you see a reflection of your earth suit, your clothing here on earth. And you don't see the real person inside. You realize who is in you and what you are as a born-again believer. The Bible says if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. You, don't, you aren't who you see in the mirror. That is not you. Just like this jacket is not me. When I go home and I take this jacket off, that's going to be gone. One of these days we'll take off this earth suit and then we'll be who we really are. We will be who we really are. So today I want to talk to you about your capabilities. So many people live so far below what they, what they could live, what they could have, not understanding what is in us. Or I should put it this way, who is in us? Amen. See, we have been empowered by the Spirit of God. Turn over to 1 Samuel chapter 16. And I want to, I want to just first of all a couple of scriptures here uh, to show you uh, the difference between how you see yourself and how God sees you. Because when you go into the mirror, you look at yourself, and a lot of, a lot of people, most people don't like what they see. I, you know, I don't know why. That's you, right? You are who you are. You ain't going to change. Your, out, your outward appearance is, is who you are. You know, just be happy, happy who you are. Because you're not, you're not somebody else. You are you. You're unique. Amen? Amen. Are these barbs unique? <laughs> Hallelujah. You're, you're unique. In 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. But the Lord said, Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his height of his stature, because I refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. When God looks at you, and you, uh, you look at yourself in a mirror, you see your physical body, but God looks inside of you. God looks past that veil of the flesh. Beyond that veil of the flesh lies something a whole lot different than what we see and what we feel and how we, how we uh, act in this natural world. Beyond that is, is a powerhouse of, of a personality, and that is you. In Acts chapter 13, God, God is talking about David, how he sought after a man, after his own heart. And David was a man after, after God's heart. And God used him as a king. And that's what we talked about last week. God is going to raise up a tabernacle of David because he saw in David something that his father didn't see, his brothers didn't see, but God saw him. God saw it. When, when they brought all the sons of Jesse in, in front of Samuel, first of all, the first thing people looked at, the, the first son was, was bigger than the other ones. He was taller. He was husky and strong. And, and that's how we look at people sometimes. We look at people like that and say, wow, they're, look at them. Look at them. They're, you know, this big, big hunk of a man. This, you know, even when I watched movies, like I've seen a few, few movies of Hercules. And they always have Hercules as this big muscle man. I believe Hercules looked like a little wimp. Because it wasn't his strength. It wasn't Samson's physical body. It wasn't Hercules' strength. It was the strength behind him. It was the strength of God that was in him. How could David, a little 17-year-old boy, how could he beat a giant who was trained in war? How would he even go out against him? Because David was a man after God's own heart. David seen something in himself other people didn't see. 
When he seen Goliath, he, he just looked at him and says, who is this guy? Who does he think he is? How can he defile the armies of God? See, and that's how we got to look at situations in life. How can this affect me? When God says, I always cause you to triumph. You're a winner and not a loser. You're always going to win. Do you understand that? You cannot lose with God. It is impossible. If you are connected with God and trusting in him, you will win all the time. So you got to quit looking at your own abilities. God has called us to do the impossible. See, if you're not attempting something impossible, then you don't need God. You got your own strength. You can do it yourself. What do I need God for? Isn't that how half the world, half the world is like that? I don't need God. We don't need God. We can do it. We all, you know, there, this, this phrase that they're coming up with during this pandemic, we can, we're all together. That sounds like to me like Nimrod's, what he would say. It's us. I told you I heard that one uh, newscaster on CNN. I heard him one time. It was right on his broadcast. He said, we don't need him. We got each other. Right on the broadcast. What an ungodly person. No. I need God. Amen. Amen. And we need, I, need, I need you, but I need God that's in you. Yeah. Hallelujah. So you, you, should put, you should be trying always to do the impossible. If, if something comes against you, that I, I can't do that. Perfect. Now you're ready for God. Perfect. Because God, God puts the, the possibility in anything that is impossible. All, the Bible says with God all things are possible. When you were born again, when you accepted Jesus into your life, when you became a new creation, your spirit man was reborn. Oh. <clears throat> it was dead, the Bible says, in trespasses and sins, but now it's alive unto God. And, and God made an avenue for him to put his spirit in you so that you could do the impossible. Before that, you were not, a person without Jesus is not capable of handling the power of God. It would be like taking a, a little um, Volkswagen Rabbit and putting a, uh, an engine in out of, a, out of a big truck and put it in it. And, and a truck that's, you know, a thousand horsepower. It would just rattle that little rabbit apart. There's no power. You, got, you have to have your body, your spirit man, has to be capable of handling the power of God. That's what this born again experience is, that now you're capable. Now you are a new wine skin. Now you can take on the new wine. Hallelujah. And you're not going to fall apart. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. You know, you know this scripture very well. Acts chapter 1. Verse number 8. It says, but you shall receive power. Say power. Power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses are my witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So what did God say when we are going to receive the Holy Spirit? He said, along with the Holy Spirit comes the miracle working power. This is what you have in you. This is what you have in you. Jesus told his disciples, I like this one over here in Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24, verse 49. He said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you've been endued with power from on high. That power that comes, in it, comes into us is from on high. It's God. Now, I started looking at this, and I, I read a commentary on this, and uh, it, it really got me excited, because it says here, it says that, uh, wait till you are endued with power from on high. The Greek word, as many of you know, is a Greek word, dunamis. It's, uh, it, is the, it is the ability, it's, a, it's power, ability, strength, and might that we get from the word. But... What we also get from this in, in our language is we get the word dynamo. 
You know, Dynamo has a lot of meaning to me because when I first started, uh, in, 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 when I was a young man, I went to electronic school and we learned all about electricity. We learned about dynamos. Dynamos are, are things that they have on, you know, when you see a big dam, a power dam, well, they put these machines in there, they're called dynamos. And the, the current from the, from the water rushing over turns these dynamos, and these dynamos begin to generate electricity. All, these, all, the, all the electricity we get for is being generated by these things called dynamos. A dynamo is, is a machine that generates electrical power. And so he uses that word, or the word that we see in, in, in dynamo, and as I was reading this commentary, and it says it actually means power capable of reproducing itself. See, they say in this world there's no such thing as a perpetual power. There's no such thing as it because it takes power to generate power. But in the spirit realm, it's perpetual because it's God's power. God's power has no limit. Amen. There's no limit. It is limitless. Yes. Limitless. How could somebody like Joshua pray a pr simple prayer and stop the sun and the moon from moving? Now that, that is impossible. But the Bible says that he did. It stopped so he could win his battle. How could somebody like Moses take a rod, a representative of, of the rod of God, the power of God, and raise it up and part a sea. That's by the miraculous working power of God. But think about it. Joshua, Moses, Elijah, Samson, who we look at as great miracle workers, none of them had the spirit like you have it. Amen. The Bible says the spirit used to come upon them. But my Bible says the Spirit of God is in you. Yes. Hallelujah. He's with, in you, with you at all times. So this, this power we get is, a, is a, a power that will continually be regenerated in us. You don't have to worry about using it up. You know, when you fill up your tank with gas, you know, you've got so many miles, two, three, four, five hundred miles, and you better stop and fill up again. But this power in you regenerates itself. You know, when you do the works, when you do the works, when you're doing something for God, you begin to generate more power in you. Part of that power is regenerated when you pray in tongues. In the book of Jude, verse 20, it says, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, listen, very carefully. If you want to see miracles, if you want the power of God in your life, you've got to pray in tongues. You will never see the miraculous. You will not see in traditional churches who don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You don't see miracle signs and wonders. You know, I've been in this, I've been in ministry, well, I've been a Christian for close to 40 years, but I've been in ministry, full-time ministry for 25 I could sit down and write you a hundred, probably two hundred miracles that I've seen. But you're not going to do that without the power of the Holy Spirit. You've got to have the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. The, Bible, the Bible also says in 1 Corinthians 4, uh, 14, He who speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Build yourself up. So just that even this morning as we were praying, and I was praying in the Spirit, you know, I am, I am aware of what's going on inside of me. I'm aware that my dynamo is turning. That power is being released. Power is being built up. There used to be a, a, a couple, Charles and Francis Hunter, who used to have these healing explosions um, years ago. But Charles and Francis Hunter used to rely so much on the Holy Spirit. I remember one meeting they were having and, and Charles went to lay hands on people and blue flames shot out of his fingers. Blue flames, that, that's the glory of God that was, that was coming out. Because he was built up. 
I remember my brother telling me one time, they were, him and some friends of there were sitting in their kitchen and around the kitchen table, and they were just young believers, maybe, maybe been born again for a year or two, but they found out about speaking in tongues and the power of the Spirit, and they were sitting around the table, he said, and they, they were praying in tongues, and he just, he happened to look up, and he seen what it looked like a force field coming down through the ceiling, like, like uh, lightnings and thunders and a cloud descending upon them in the kitchen so much that it scared them. They didn't know what to do. And they all stopped and freaked out. As soon as they stopped, the cloud went right back up. See, there's power in the Holy Spirit. There's power in praying in tongues. I told you this, and I want to encourage you this. I, I, something has happened to me in the last maybe six months. I find myself praying in tongues more, more and more. And I, I believe, this is, my, this is my belief, that I believe we are coming into a place where we have to have this miracle power. Yeah. We have to have this power more than we ever did before. Amen. Don't get caught asleep. Be, be aware of who is in you. Be aware of what's in you. This is that miracle working power. Remember in John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus said, the works that I do, you will do also. What did Jesus do? He healed the sick. Everywhere he went, he healed the sick. Entire cities would come out. Thousands of people. Anybody who was sick, anybody who was lame, the blind, the deaf, those who were tormented by evil spirits, and they would come out. And Jesus, the Bible said, healed them all. And we know he didn't do it as Jesus the, the man. Because he never did a miracle until the Holy Spirit descended upon him. It was all by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Look, at, look over in Acts, Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. This is a scripture I learned 30 some years ago because it was so powerful, it stuck with me. I quote it a lot, but I just want you to see it. Acts chapter 10, verse number 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. How is God with Jesus? He was with him through the power of the Holy Spirit. How God anointed. You know what the word anointed means? The anointed means smeared on. You know, when they, you, you know, a lot of times we anoint people. We have a little, I have a little bottle of oil and we take a little bit and dab it on their forehead. That's not the way they did it in, in, in the Bible days. They, they would take the oil and pour it right on top of you. It would run right all the way down. And this is what happens. Jesus was smeared with the, with the oil of the Holy Spirit. And notice it says the Holy Spirit and power. That same word, that dynamo, that generator that's inside was inside of, of him. You remember how Jesus, the Bible says how Jesus at some times he would get up early in the morning and go off by himself and pray. I believe Jesus prayed in tongues. You know, I, I, and the Bible talks in a couple places about how he groaned in the spirit. You know, that, that, that was groaning, which talks about in, in Romans chapter 8, how, how the spirit helps us with groanings which cannot be uttered in, in our normal language. And I believe Jesus built himself up in the Holy Spirit. He prayed. He was in communion with God. <clears throat> and the power of God, it says here that... Uh, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. The power comes with the Holy Spirit. You are empowered. Amen? Amen. You are empowered. You have to look beyond this veil of flesh and see who you are. If you, don't, if you do not see who you are, you will never do miracle signs and wonders. You will never see them. You'll, I mean, you might see them if somebody else does them, but you will never be a participant in them. You know, it's, it's way more fun. I mean, I, I used to love sports when I was a young man, and I, I, the sports I play now are not so rough and tumble as I used to play. I play golf. Well, I like to watch golf on TV, but I'd much rather be on a course hitting the ball myself. Amen? Amen. You know, I like to watch football, but when I was a young man, I remember as a kid, 
We'd watch on, on Sunday afternoon, uh, we'd watch the, the Green Bay Packers play, because that's the only channel we got up there was a Green Bay station. So we'd watch the Packers play. But my, my best buddy lived uh, behind, in a house behind me. As soon as it was halftime, he would run out, I would run out, and we'd play football in the backyard for half an hour during halftime. Because we wanted to be just like, I wanted to be just like Bart Starr, throw the long bomb. You know, just, just like one of my heroes back in them days. It was more fun playing it than it was watching it. It's more fun when you're involved with a miracle than sitting back and say, wow, did you see what, what Kenneth Hagin did? Did you see what Jesse Duplan is? No. What about you? Say, what about me? What about me? You got it in you. The only reason you don't see it or people don't see it, I'm not saying you because I know some of you, you do do these things, but the reason why a lot of people don't is because they don't understand who's in them. They, they don't see like God sees. They just see the, see the flesh. And they say, well, that's me. That's not you you see in the mirror. You have never, ever seen yourself, as a matter of fact. Do you know that? You have never seen your face. Never. You have never seen your face. You've seen a reflection of it, but you have never seen your face. Unless you pop your eyeball and hold it out here. But you haven't seen yourself. You're just seeing a reflection of you. You got to see what's in here. See the power that's in you. The miracle working power. So this power is given to us to do the miraculous. Attempt. You, gotta, you need to go out and attempt things that you can't do on your own. If, if, like I said, if you can do it on your own, you don't need God. That's why, we gotta, that's why I look to do the impossible. It's impossible to do what we're doing. I mean, the, 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 the effect that this church has on the world is impossible with us. How can we do this? How can we, how can we reach millions of people in another country on the other side of the world. We do, it, we do it because the Holy Spirit is empowering us to do it. Through prayers, through whatever God has us to do. And just a reminder to you out there watching me and to you here, remember God has opened a door for us to go into three more nations in Africa. Remember I told you about it a few weeks ago. We have to, we're, going to, we're looking to raise uh, $12,000 to get, get our, <clears throat> get our um, television station, get these programs. What I'm preaching now, what I'm preaching now is going to be shown to 47 million people in Uganda next week. This is going on in the air. But God is opening a new door where we're going to reach another 120,000 or 120 million people. If we, you know, we need to raise $12,000 to get on this channel. And I believe God's going to do it. I, I said it, you know, in, in my heart, I want to have this done by November 15th. Hallelujah. That we can, we can uh, send to uh, Africa <clears throat> and buy our, our position on that African satellite. Because I think this is, this is just, the, the first door we had was just going to Uganda. The second door we had was the miraculous uh, acquisition of a television station in, in Africa. So we, we through uh, Pastor Solomon and King Solomon and Good News Ministry, own our own TV station in Africa. That's how we reach Africa, that's how we reach Uganda. But now we've been given an opportunity to reach three more nations, Kenya, Tanzania, and Rwanda, that if we get into their satellite that's feeding them, we'll reach another 120 million people. So keep that in your prayers, and any of you need to send an offering, you can send it here to the Lighthouse Faith Center in Ironwood, or go on our websites, <clears throat> excuse me, our website, Lighthouse Faith Center, or uh, our African website, Teach Me About Faith, and you can donate through there. So help us out. Let's get this job done. Amen? Amen. Amen. We got the power to do it. God, God is working in us. The Holy Spirit is, is in us, empowers us to know things that other people don't know. You will never know things except the Holy Spirit reveal things to you. You can know people, people who study the Bible, 
Great people, great scholars study the Bible, and they, they learn things in the Bible. But they never learn <clears throat> the deep things of God. You, you can only get that through revelation of the Spirit. That's why a lot, of, a lot of churches, a lot of ministries, a lot of Christians, they, they really come against speaking in tongues and the Pentecostals. That's because they don't understand it. They think, it's, they think all we do is getting some fleshly excitement and we're just going, whoa, we're crazy. No, I'm, I'm praying by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray in the Spirit. I don't pray out of my flesh. That doesn't even come out of my flesh. 1 Corinthians 14 says that, that if, if I pray in an, in an unknown tongue, my understanding is unfruitful, meaning my mind is not the one that's praying. It's praying. I'm praying out of my spirit. This is where the power comes from. <clears throat> you have been endued with power. Um, <clears throat> let's go over in, into uh, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. We have... We have uh, the great teacher in us. Listen to what it says here in 1 John chapter 2 and start in verse 26. He says, These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has been taught to you, you will abide in him. So what, what John is talking about here, he says in verse 26, I'm talking to you about some things that people are trying to deceive you in. But our, our, our check, our, our ability to not be deceived comes from the anointing that's in. A lot of people look at this scripture and says, well, I don't need a teacher. It says, uh, it says here, I don't need teachers. Well, the teacher just taught them, you need this teaching. <laughs> That's kind of a dumb thing for people to say. Amen. So we, he's talking about we, we, don't, we don't need outside teachers de trying to deceive us because we have, we have the unction of the Holy Spirit in us to know. Have you ever heard of a strange doctrine? And, and something that's a little bit different than what you know in the Word, and you look at it and go, well, and all of a sudden something down here says, uh-uh, something's not right. See, that's the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8, those who, those who are led by the Spirit, they are sons of God. When you are led by the Spirit, when you are prayed up in the Holy Ghost, you will not get deceived. Because it says right here, you have an anointing in you. You have that power in you to keep you from deception. Yes, we need teachers. We all need teachers. You need teachers. I need teachers. But the teacher will, <clears throat> will uh, give witness, or the, the Spirit of God in, in us will give witness to what we're being taught. So the Bible tells us that we have a teacher. The key to keep us from deception is the teacher. It is the, the teacher, the Holy Spirit that's in us. An anointing. You have, been, you have been given an anointing to keep you. In verse number, verse number 20 of that same chapter, it says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. What? You know all things. Amen. You know all things. All things are there. All, everything's available to you. All you got to do is tap into it. You have, the Bible says you have the mind of Christ. Does Jesus know all things? Yes. So you know all things. It's just you have to access them. <clears throat> Did you ever do this? this ever happened to you where, where you're trying to think of, maybe you've been to a restaurant and, and you're trying to think, of, oh, what was that name? What, what was that name? Or you met somebody and, and you start thinking, oh, you know, you're, you're going through the files. Chris just showed up here and I haven't seen him in months. So as soon as I seen him, I recognize his face. But I didn't recognize that his name didn't come right away. And I'm going, it's going through my brain. I'm thinking of names, name. What's his name? See, and that's, that's what this anointing does. This anointing will go through the files that are in you. The Spirit of God which searches the deep things of man. And it's been going in. Okay, what is that? What is that? What is this that I want to know? And then he will reveal it to you. The Holy Spirit is our revealer. He's our, he's our teacher. Look over in John chapter 14. John chapter 14. 
Oh, how we need this, in, this power, this dynamo working in us. John 14, verse 26. He says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in mind, He will teach you all things and will bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. You know, there are, there are times when, when uh, you're, t you're, you're talking to somebody and, you, you know, you say, Holy Spirit, what do they need to hear? That's a good thing to ask. Because you know, there's some people, you, if you go out and just try to give them the gospel, they, don't, they, they wouldn't be able to ha handle it. You know, when, sometimes when you witness to somebody, you can't tell them about the mark of the beast and 666 and all the tribulation and the vials and, the, and they're gonna, they have no idea what you're talking about. But the Holy Spirit will reveal what they need. Jesus loves you. Something very simple. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance. The Holy Spirit, you know, is, is what brings things to our remembrance. You know, a lot of times people say, well, well you know, when you get older, memory's going to go. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. The, my Bible says the memory of the righteous is blessed. My Bible says I have the mind of Christ. My Bible says I know all things. My Bible says the Holy Spirit will bring all things to my remembrance. Amen. 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 So when people say that, I go, no, 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 no. no. And a lot of people say, well, when you get older, you can't remember things. Well, I couldn't remember things when I was 10 years old. I leave my gloves at, leave my gloves at school and Forget my books, forget my homework. Well, that might have been on purpose. But, <laughs> but when we're young, we forget things. So it's not about, it's not about that. That's, that's the way you, the human brain works, I guess. We don't, we, some things, we, maybe we choose not to remember. But don't fall for that trick when you get older. Because you, you can have the mind of Christ till the day you die. Because my Bible says, the Holy Spirit will bring to my remembrance all things that I, that I you know, I, I like to play mind games with myself. <laughs> you know, I, I, I train my mind. I, you know, sometimes I think of, I, I just wake up and I say, now, who did I work with back in 1973? And then I try to remember all the names of people I worked with. Then sometimes it takes me a little while, but you know, I get them. I get them all. Their, their faces will come up, their names will come up. You know, and so I, just, I like to play that, I play them games with my mind to keep my mind sharp. And I'll start, <clears throat> start remembering scripture. Sometimes I just do that. I'll just sit at home and I'll quote scripture. And I'll start quoting scriptures and then they'll come boom, 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 boom. And the more it happens, or the more I do it, the more it happens. That's why here when I preach a lot of times, I don't read scripture, but I just quote them. The Holy Spirit is bringing that all up. He's empowering us, empowering us to uh, learn. Knowledge is power. You need the power of knowledge. But another thing the Holy Spirit gives us is the power to live this life. Yes. Amen. In Galatians chapter 5, Galatians, chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 16, he says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The problem that people have, you know what I found out as being a born-again, spirit-filled believer, I have very little trouble with the devil. Because he lives, he doesn't even exist where I live. I live in light. Where does he live? Darkness. Amen. So I don't even live in the same world where he is. And, my, and actually my Bible tells me that Jesus disarmed principalities and powers. So he's got no power. Luke chapter 10, he says, I've given you power over serpents and scorpions and all the power of the devil. And nothing by any means shall harm you. The Bible says in John chapter 17, Jesus prayed and he said, Father, keep them from the evil one. I believe Jesus gets his prayers answered. So the devil is not a big deal anymore. He's a big deal in the world. He's a big deal to unbelievers, but to me he's not. I mean, he's out there, he's, you know, he tries things, but we know who's got the power, right? I got the power. Greater is he 
that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. And so uh, we, we need to do what it says here. It says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the big problem that we have is not with the devil, it's with this. It's with, with the flesh. Because the, the Bible says the flesh lusts against the spirit. The flesh wants, the flesh is really strange. I mean, think about your flesh. Your flesh will do, really it'll do, if you let it go, it'll run amok. I mean, it'll just, it'll just, you know, do everything that makes it feel good. It'll sleep 20 hours a day. It'll, it'll eat anything that you put in front of it. And it'll, it'll not do anything. But if you go the opposite way, if you start running and exercising, your flesh, that's all it wants to do is exercise. All it wants to do is run. I don't have time to eat. I don't have time to do it. I got to go to the gym. I got to pump iron. I got to get my muscles bigger. See, people get obsessed. Do you ever see people with muscles on top of their muscles? They get obsessed with it. They live it. That's all they think about. So your, your flesh craves exercise. Your, your flesh, so flesh is really, it, it'll, it'll, it, it's really strained. But walking in the spirit, and it says here, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So our mind has to be tried, and we have to take our mind and focus on spiritual things. Focus on that anointing, that power that's in you, and you're not going to have trouble with the flesh. You'll begin to put the flesh down. You'll begin to push, you can go on and read that, all the things that the flesh wants to do, but I, I'd, I'd just rather go down to verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. I want love. Joy, I like joy. Peace, oh, peace, I love peace. Long-suffering, long-suffering. Patience, oh, I love patience. Kindness, especially when you're kind to me, no. Goodness. I like things that are good, faithfulness, gentleness, self. All these things just seem, don't these all sound just comforting? Yes. Amen. Because they're from the comforter. Yes. Amen. He comforts us. That's that anointing that empowers you to live this Christian life. If you don't turn yourself over to the Holy Spirit, you're going to have trouble with your flesh. Your flesh is just going to want to do and be, and you know, want to uh, do whatever it wants to do. You have to tell your flesh, no flesh. I, I'm the one who, I'm the one in here. I live in this flesh. I tell my flesh what to do. I tell my flesh, get up off your butt, go do your work, clean your kitchen, wash your dishes. Pretty soon, shovel snow. Mm. <laughs> But you have to tell your flesh to do it. If you don't, if you don't tell your flesh to do it, that flesh won't do it. You have to be the one who's in authority. I'm talking about the you, the inner man. I'm talking about the one that God sees. God sees you empowered. God sees you putting the flesh down. <clears throat> you have in you the very creative power of God. You're a child of God. You are just like Jesus. Just like Jesus. You're just like Jesus. Can you look at yourself in the mirror and say, hey, you're just like Jesus. You're just like, I can do the same thing Jesus did. You know, the, the religious world would say, blasphemy. No, I'm just saying what Jesus said. Right. Jesus said that yeah, the works that I do, you'll do also. Jesus said that, that I'm created for signs and wonders. <clears throat> look at this over in Matthew chapter 10. Here's one to throw some of that theology uh, in, the, in the dump. Matthew chapter 10. You're a child of God. You're made in the image of God. You have been empowered by God. They, used, they did this experiment when I was in, I was in this electronics school. <clears throat> I don't remember exactly how it works, but... <clears throat> They take, a, they take a generator, a dynamo, and they do something, they cross a couple wires. Because a, a generator will, will, will run at a certain speed. It'll go, you know, 5,000 RPMs, 10,000 RPMs. But they do something with it, they cross it, where the generator will 
will, will have no limit. It'll start, it'll start going, and it'll just keep going. And the instructor was there, he was, he was showing us, but he wouldn't, didn't let it go far, but you could hear it, it was, just started whining, and it was getting really, you know, like it was really fast. <clears throat> and he said, the, the problem with something like this, when this runs amok, he said, don't run out of the room, because it, he said, if it runs amok, he said, it'll be out there before you are. It'll just explode in part. He said, you, you have no idea where, where it's going to go. And say, you have, that, you have that in you. You have that kind of unlimited power. You know, you are, you, are, you are sent by God. You are capable to go out there and explode on this world. That's what God's looking for us to do explode on this world, to bring his gospel into the highways and byways. Bring the gospel to those who know nothing about him, because you are a child of God. Listen, uh, Matthew 10, verse 24. Jesus is talking. He said, a disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. Now, all the religious world would say, amen, that's right. We're, can be, we're not like Jesus. But then listen to the next verse. It is enough for a disciple to be like his teacher and a servant to be like his master. In other words, you can be just like Jesus. You can be just like the teacher. When Jesus walked the shores of Galilee and, and, and did mighty works, you can do the same thing. It's all out there for us. We have the, we have the power, just like Jesus, to do good, to heal all that are oppressed of the devil. It's in you. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people um, kind of misunderstand the Holy Spirit. I'm going over Acts chapter 19. And uh, a lot of the, a lot of our brothers and sisters don't know about what we call the baptism in the Holy Spirit. About being filled with the Spirit. A being with, endued with that power from on high. See, just like you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, how do you receive Jesus? The Bible says you believe in your, you believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, and then you confess him with your mouth. So you, you believe that Jesus died for your sins, and then you use your free will, and you say, Jesus, I acknowledge, I make the acknowledgement that you are my God. I confess you as my Lord. The Bible says, then you are born again. Well, the same thing happens with the Holy Spirit. I mean, Jesus is one part of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is another part of the Godhead. When Jesus died, he left the earth. We are part of his body. But the Holy Spirit now came into the earth. And Jesus talked about how when he comes, he was going to be with you, and he's going to be in you. But a lot of people don't, don't get it that you have to ask the Holy Spirit into your life the same way you ask Jesus into your life. Jesus doesn't come into somebody's life unless they invite him in. The Holy Spirit is the same thing. Yes, we have the Spirit of Christ at, at the new birth, but we do not have the fullness of the Holy Spirit. This, this scripture here in Acts chapter 19 is the clearest scripture in the Bible that I know of to show this. It says here in uh, Acts 19, verse 1, And it happened while Apollo was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. They didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. They were disciples. They were following Jesus. They were believers because he said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they were born again, but they knew nothing about the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and drop down in verse 6. It says, and when Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. This is that empowerment that I'm talking about. Jesus was empowered at the whole, uh, with the Holy Spirit when he got baptized by John. We get empowered by the Holy Spirit when we ask the Holy Spirit to come in or we ask somebody to pray for us, ask somebody to lay hands on us, then we receive that power of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. 
You want that empowering in your life, you have to have this, this uh, connection with the Holy Spirit. You have to be filled with the Spirit. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask, is there anybody here today, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit and you heard about this dynamo power that's available to you, I'll lay hands on you right now just the way Paul did. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit will come upon you. It's just an act of faith. Just like you believe that Jesus uh, came into your life when you, when you prayed to be born again. You got hands, you got, you know, you confessed with your mouth and you walked away saying, I am a new creation in Christ. It's the same thing when you acknowledge the Holy Spirit. You can walk away and say, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I now have that dynamo working in me. So if you're here today and you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit and you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you can just come up here and I'll lay hands on you. And any of you that watching me by this camera, I'm going to, I'm going to pray a, a prayer for you in a moment. So I want you to get ready. If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, the same way I'm telling you, there is a Holy Spirit, just like the Apostle Paul told these disciples. They said, we didn't even hear there was a Holy Spirit. Well, I'm telling you, there is a Holy Spirit, and it's talked about right here, and you can receive it too in your life. Is there anybody here that you would like to receive this infilling of the Holy Spirit? If you do, come up and I'll pray over you right now. <clears throat> Amen. If not, then we're going we're to pray for those on the camera. Those who are watching, those of you listening to me now, those who are listening, get ready right now. Just say, just say, Father God, in Jesus' name, I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. By faith, I receive the Holy Spirit into my life. In Jesus' name, receive the Holy Spirit. Now begin to pray in another language. Begin to pray. Don't speak in whatever language you are. Speak. Let the Holy Spirit just come through you right now. Thank you, Father, for filling your people with your spirit today, enduing them with power from on high. Say, I got it. Say, I got the Holy Spirit. I got the power. I got that dynamo in me. I can do signs and wonders. Through that power of the Holy Spirit. Turn to somebody and tell them, you got that power. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Father, I pray over your people today. I pray that miracle working power will go through them. They'll use that power to heal the sick, to, to present the gospel to the lost, <clears throat> to uh, cast out the devil. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.